leader. Sharon has been a student of Unity and New Thought principles for 35 years and has been a speaker at other Unity churches. During her career, she has worked in roles as leader, educator, coach, and consultant for large corporations, hospitals, universities, nonprofits, as well as for the military. Prior to moving to the villages last year with her husband John, who's our singer today, she has worked as a military and family life counselor at the Pentagon and Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in the D.C. area, in addition to assignments in Heidelberg, Germany, and Fort Durham, New York. Sharon is a mother and stepmother of three and a grandmother of seven. You're not going to believe that when you see her stand up here. So Sharon, we welcome you and as um, our loved member and as our sharing with us today. Thank you very much. Everybody. What a pleasure to be with you all to celebrate Mother's Day and the spirit of mothering that's within all of us. So we, we want to thank the, um, the Unity Men's Group here who gave all of the mothers this beautiful rose as they came in today. That's all about our <laughs> so I just want to see by a show of hands here, we can see by the roses how many mothers are here. Okay, so out of all the mothers, now how many grandmothers, keep your rows up if you're a grandmother, and how many great-grandmothers? Okay, keep your roses up, and are there any great-great-grandmothers? Well, let's give a hand to all of the mothers, grandmothers, all of them. And how many of you have never had that title of mother, but you have been honored to love many in your life, like the heart of a mother and grandmother? So let's see a show of hands for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're honoring mothers as well as, you know, that broader spirit of mothering that's within all of us. So I know that you are all accustomed to having a joke to start off with, so I, I have to be on my toes with that and give you something, I know. So here we go. A newlywed wife excitedly greeted her husband when he returned from work. She said to him, honey, I have some great news for you. Pretty soon, we're going to be a family of three here in this household instead of two. Her husband's expression quickly revealed his joy in hearing this news. His eyes sparkled with delight and his smile couldn't be contained. He ran to his wife and embraced her tenderly. He was still glowing with happiness and kissing his wife when she looked up at him and said, I'm really glad you feel this way, honey, since tomorrow morning my mother is moving in with us. <laughs> that was a little twist there, wasn't it? So we are here today to honor the, the spirit of mothering within all of us. And, um, what a wonderful opportunity we have here. You know, there are so many amazing stories about mothers. Some of you have probably read books like Chicken Soup for the Soul and all those wonderful stories that have heartwarming stories in them. And probably some of you could write your own story, right? Well, um, today I'm going to share a story with you. Um, that's, it's not from Chicken Soup for the Soul. But it, it is a story that, that I've learned a lot from, and I'm hoping that you may be able to get some insights from. So I'm going to be sharing excerpts from this story. It's called The Gift. And I'll be stepping into the story, sharing with you about the story, and then we'll stop and step back out of the story and reflect and look back to see what we can learn from this story, okay? So the story that I'm going to share with you today like I said, it's called A Gift, and it's a story about a little girl who lived with her family in the country. She loved being outdoors in nature, and one of her greatest delights was swinging. She, would, she loved to play on the swing set in the backyard, and she would you know, pump her feet as high as she could go, and just felt like she was soaring in the sky. So this brought great delight to her. Nothing she felt loved better than just feeling the wind against her hair as she was swinging. 
On a lazy summer afternoon, you might find her laying on a blanket in the backyard, simply gazing up at the clouds as, in the sky as she pondered and reflected upon the mysteries of life. The little girl has had two older sisters, so as you might imagine, many of the much of the clothing that she wore was handed down to her from her older sisters. Since there was a constant supply of hand-me-down dresses, she rarely got anything new. Although she was always pleased to, to be able to grow into these different dresses that her sisters handed down to her, she secretly wished that she could have a new dress that was just for her, all of her own. So on her fifth birthday, the little girl's wish came true, and she received a wonderful gift. Her mother surprised her with a beautiful pink dress that she had secretly and lovingly made in the quiet of the night as the little girl slept. The dress was made of pink polished cotton that reminded her of cotton candy. And it glistened with a sheen that was like the sparkle of sunlight on freshly fallen snow. Pink and white gingham fabric highlighted scallops around a big round collar and formed a border along the hem of the dress. There were small appliques with the shape of a doll, a dollhouse, and a teddy bear. And these were all carefully stitched in place. And the, along the back of the dress, there were pink uh, crystal buttons down the back. And there was a big sash that was tied at the waistline. Well, the little girl's heart just simply overflowed with joy when she saw the beautiful dress. She was so delighted. She thought it was the best present she had ever been given. When she put the dress on, she felt like a princess and stepped right out of the pages of a fairy tale. And each time she wore the dress, her heart grew as she felt the imprint of her mother. And her face lit up with a smile. She felt all of the love her mother had poured into that dress through her careful stitching. So the pink dress became a symbol of her mother's love and a reminder to her that she was worthy <coughs> and valuable, that her dreams and wishes could come true. And she carried this message in her heart. The little girl was hoping to wear the pink dress for her first day of school. But by the time that day rolled around, the dress appeared to be shrinking. Then sadly, one day the buttons would no longer close. So her mother packed the pink dress away and replaced it with the next size of hand-me-down dresses from her sister. But the little girl kept the pink dress, and she remembered the love her mother had poured into it, and all the joy that she felt in wearing the dress. Time passed quickly, and the little girl progressed through the first two years of grade school. It was during these early years of grade school that she could feel a shift that was beginning to happen in her mother. She saw that in her mother's efforts to care for everyone in the family, there was no time left for her to care for herself and her own needs. Her energy was consumed by caring for everyone else. She was becoming empty and depleted. Then when the little girl was in third grade, the reality that she had always known suddenly began to shatter. First, her grandmother, her mother's mother, died. Then, several months later, her grandfather, her mother's father, died. And if that wasn't enough, a few months later, the little girl's great aunt died. And, and the great aunt was especially dear to her mother. So with each loss, the little girl felt her mother's sadness deepening and felt her withdrawing from the joys of living. The little girl was very in tune with life, and she intuitively knew there was more to come. She could feel that something awful was coming. And it wasn't long before her intuition proved to be true. A tragedy happened that shook the little girl to the core of her being. It shook her with the force of a powerful earthquake that turned her life upside down and inside out. When the little girl and her siblings returned home from school one day, they discovered a tragedy that was heartbreaking and worse than anything she could have ever imagined. 
Their mother had taken her own life. She had committed suicide and taken not only her own life, but the life of, a, the life of their five-year-old brother. On the table in the living room, a magazine had been left open to an article titled, The Darkest Day of My Life. The little girl's feeling that something awful was coming had certainly proved to be right. She had suddenly lost both her mother and her little brother, and her world would never be the same. Waves of shock pulsed through the little girl and her family and their small community as they embraced the reality of this tragedy. There was an enormously overwhelming feeling of loss. The harsh reality of her loss left the young girl feeling like the breath had been completely knocked out of her. She felt as though she had suddenly fallen onto cold, hard concrete. She wondered how she would be able to go on. When the little girl returned to school, she had difficulty concentrating or even caring about school or anything else. She would occasionally lay her head quietly on her desk to hide her enormous sadness. But the breath of God breathed through the little girl and carried her forward when she didn't know how she could go on. It opened her deeply to the seeds of divine love within her and to discovering the re resilience she had that she didn't know about. And these seeds of divine love began to sprout forth and function like wings that somehow lifted her and guided her fragile spirit through her enormous grief and the challenges she faced. The little girl who was just nine and her big sisters who were 12 and 13 became mother figures to each other as they each struggled to make sense of their loss and find their way without a mother. Fortunately, there were many kind and caring women in their small community where the little girl lived, neighbors, teachers, friends from her church, and mothers of her school friends. They took an interest in her, extended love and kindness, and some even helped, helped to care for her when she was sick and couldn't go to school. The little girl and her sisters challenged themselves to share the role of mother rather than having someone else come into the home and run their household. So with the help of others, they overcame the challenges before them and eventually became quite skilled at managing the household. So skilled that many, many adults in the community remarked at their ability. The most consistent person for the young girl was a very kind, grandmotherly-like neighbor who had always been a loving presence in her life. She made special birthday cakes and gave presents to her on her birthday, spent time with her, said bedtime prayers with her, and tucked her into bed. The little girl's relationship with her dear grandmotherly -like neighbor took on a new meaning as, she, as this neighbor became a, a haven from the reality of the little girl's loss. She was a nurturing presence, a protector, and a guardian angel for her who sheltered and comforted the little, the little girl with love and kindness throughout the rest of her childhood. Five years passed, and when the young girl was 14, a stepmother entered her life and as her father remarried. As the girl grew, she appreciated her stepmother and all of the other mother figures around her. But she secretly <coughs> missed her mother at each milestone in the various stages of her life. As she grew into adulthood, the pink dress that was packed away continued to be a reminder of her mother's love. She knew that the dress was a symbol of her love and that the essence of her mother's love would remain in her heart forever. The years passed quickly, and as the little girl grew into a young woman, eventually married and had children of her own. As a mother herself, she discovered that the love from her mother and all those who had nurtured her and loved her was there within her. And that love had gradually grown and matured over the years. She gradually began to realize that any great loss becomes an opening for the formless presence of divine love to express more fully through it. As her daughter grew, the young mother sought to express her love in many ways. For her daughter's second Christmas, she made her a special red dress with a heart-shaped pocket and a tiny stuffed doll that fit perfectly into the pocket. The young woman poured her love into that special red dress, 
as she stitched it. It was the same kind of love she knew her mother had poured into the pink dress that she had made for her. Her daughter wore that special red dress until she outgrew it. <coughs> then that dress was carefully packed away. She knew that the love she had poured into making that special dress and all of the other ways that she had expressed her love in raising her daughter would be imprinted in both of their hearts forever. As the young woman moved from state to state during her adult years, she carried both the pink dress her mother made and the red dress she made for her daughter. Both dresses were reminders of a mother's love for her child. Her mother had chosen the pink dress as a symbol of the magnificent divine love the little girl was to embody. Through her wisdom as a mother, she knew the pink dress was something the little girl would receive joyfully and delight in wearing. And then her heart would grow as she felt all of the love she had poured into it. So I'd like to step out of the story now and step back to reflect with you as we shine a light on what we can learn from this story. I'll share a few of my insights and you may have insights of your own. This is really a story about resilience. This, the little girl in this story had a tremendous loss, yet through her loss she discovered inner strength and resilience she didn't know she had. How many of you have had an experience of something that was seemed very tragic, um, but yet it opened you in some way that you benefited beyond your wildest imagination? And you learn that you are resilient, that you can face the challenges of life and come through them on the other side. So we each face various changes and challenges, and some of them may really shake us to the core of our being and feel like an earthquake has moved in, like it did for the little girl. And each challenge and loss we face is an opportunity for us to reach inside to that presence and power within us as well as to reach out around us to all of the people around us for help and support. The love of our mother and all of those who nurtured us and care for us can help to strengthen our natural resilience and help us to find strength in each moment and to back, back, bounce back from the changes and challenges of life. I think the little girl in this story may demonstrate a phenomenon that has become known in the military in recent years as post-traumatic growth. Uh, this term post-traumatic growth emerged from the military's work with wounded warriors who have had post-traumatic stress from the impact of combat and find that as they are able to heal, they can experience growth that results in resilience and renewal that makes them even stronger than ever, in spite of their losses and in spite of their traumas. Each of us has the ability to heal and transform traumas, challenges, losses into growth, into new resilience, into a new spiritual depth. This story also demonstrates that a mother's love leaves an imprint in our heart and soul. And the imprint of this love can spark remembrance of the the blueprint of divine love that is within each of us. A mother's love is timeless. It can never be lost. And it's not dependent on whether that love continues to be embodied in the physical form that we know as mother. We know that the physical form of every mother will eventually pass away, but the formless essence of her love for her children and all others is divine love. And that love leaves an imprint in our heart that remains forever. A mother's love is synonymous with God's love. And we are each continually cradled in the heart of God and all who have loved us. <coughs> all those who have loved us as well as those that have birthed us as well as all those who have nurtured us and, and cared for us in some way at any time in our lives. We're each giving birth to our own true essence as we grow in our ability to give and receive love and to care for ourselves and care for others. The story I've reflected 
shows that we each have a need for renewal. Mothers have a great need for, re for self-renewal, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is not unique to mothers. We all have a need to re continually renew ourselves and care for ourselves in ways that nurture our spirit. So it applies to all of us, both women and men. When we give to others without taking care of ourselves, we become depleted. That changes the quality of what we have to give. And that depletion is a sign that we have lost our natural alignment with our inner source of balance and well-being. We become run down like a battery that's lost its charge. So we each need to allow time and space in our life for the practices that support our spiritual alignment, our renewal, and our natural capacity for health and well-being. And we must learn that the cycle of giving and receiving is really one continuous circle. It's not two separate acts. As we give, we expand our ability to receive. And as we allow ourselves to receive, we expand our ability to give. This story demonstrates how part of the journey for a mother, as well as for each of us, is to learn to accept and be with life as it is. We often want life to be different than it is, don't we? We, we wish it were different. We, we would rather not have, perhaps, challenges and changes and different things that, that cause us to bring out our resiliency. But, but those challenges and changes seem to be a part of life, as far as I've ex experienced so far. Um, and so it's part of our path to learn to embrace whatever shows up on our path from moment to moment and uh, reach in and find the resources that we need and reach around us to find the resources that we need to help us to move forward. This story is also about embracing the changes, challenges, and losses of life and allowing everything in life to open us more deeply to our capacity to love and to embrace the joy that's within us. I mean, you would, we, we could all probably agree that we would like to experience lots of joy in our life, and that joy is naturally within each of us. It's innately there. Uh, but we would all probably also agree we'd rather not go to sadness and grief and those kinds of feelings. It seems like they're two different things, but actually they are one and the same and different ends of the same spectrum. And to the extent that we can allow ourselves to embrace the losses, the grief, whatever feelings show up in the moment, that opens us to greater, a greater experience on the other end of the spectrum, to experiencing more of the joy that's naturally there. This story also reflects the importance of our own state of mind and how it can color our decisions and choices. We each have innate health and well-being within us. <laughs> But our state of mind can fluctuate from moment to moment, doesn't it? it? Depends on our thinking and whether or not we happen to hold the thoughts that are continually flowing through our mind. Our feelings are like a compass that show us where our state of mind is in the moment. It often appears that we feel what we feel because of something somebody said or did or something that's going on outside of us, right? But the, actually, we live in an inside-out world, and we feel what we feel, and we experience what we experience because of the story that we tell ourselves, because of what's going on here. Actually, uh, research by psychologists shows that we each have approximately 60,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot, isn't it? That's quite a parade of thoughts flowing through. You know, thought is invol involuntary. It's like our heartbeat. You know, the mind just, just flows, and we have thoughts. And um, 90,000, or 90% of those 60,000 thoughts are repetitive. It means we get into the same patterns every day. So those repetitive patterns of thought creates those sort of like thought ruts, you could say. It's kind of like a car driving down a gravel, gravel road would leave tire prints, right? It's like we have those places that we, we tend to fall into. So... Um, if we want to open to greater possibilities in our lives, we must each become the guardian of our own state of mind. We must become aware of our thinking, 
Then inquire into whether the beliefs we hold about ourselves and others and the world around us are actually true. Uh, much that we operate off of through our conditioning is, is, is uh, actually you know, not true. But it's just something that we have, it's those ruts that we're falling into. So we each have to examine that for ourselves. Well, I'd like to invite you to um, step back into the story with me now for a moment. As we And we're going to fast forward a little bit. Now, the little girl from the story is a grandmother. Time has passed. And the little girl that received the pink dress and has grown into a mature woman and a grandmother. She continues to look for ways to express her love to her children, her grandchildren, and all others in her life. And the daughter in the story that was given the red dress has become a mother herself. Now she's finding her own unique ways to express her love that will leave an indelible imprint on the heart of her child, as well as in her own heart. Well, there's one thing about this story that I've intentionally left out, and I'm going to share that with you now. So give me a moment, and I'll just pull out my, my little prop that I'm bringing out here. The story I'm sharing with you is a true story from my own life. I was wow. a little girl in the pink dress. And this is the pink dress. The pink dress has traveled and made many, many, many moves. I pulled it out about 12 years ago after I thought I had long thrown it out. Um, it was in a flat, just paper bag that had been in for many, many years and had brown spots all over it. So I took it to the dry cleaners and they said, well, I, those spots are never going to come out. But miraculously, somehow, the spots came out. So this dress has been a reminder to me of my inheritance of divine love. And I brought it here today, hoping that it could be a reminder to you of your inheritance of divine love. So one of the themes from the story I've shared is about giving and receiving love and recognizing the gifts of love that are extended to us. Whether they come in a specific form, such as a pink dress, or in some other way. It reminds us to recognize and celebrate each gift of love that is given to us. This story also reminds us to consider the various ways we could express love and to express it in a way that others could best receive it. In the story I've shared, the little girl's mother knew that the pink dress would be the perfect expression of love she would be receptive to. Your way of expressing love to someone might be as simple as a smile, a hug, really listening to someone, or any act of kindness or service. And it may be totally related to anything that you actually do. It may be you just simply being you in your divine expression of love and doing that in the way that you were created to do. So the story about the gift of the pink dress is from my life, but I wonder if in some way it might be relevant to your life too. It's a story about the power of a mother's love, the resilience of the human spirit, and our ability to embrace the changes, challenges, and losses that are a part of life and to grow through all of our life experiences. Our stories reflect the way our soul has chosen to grow and evolve. And yet it's important to remember that we are not our stories. Beyond our story and everything in life that's continually changing on the surface of life. You know, everything that's alive is always changing. That's why everything on the surface of life is always, you know, there's an ebb and flow. But beyond everything on the surface, there is a still presence within each of us that is unaffected by any change, any challenge, any loss, any diagnosis, any condition unaffected that taint that ageless, timeless presence. 
That presence is like the stillness in the bottom of the ocean. It's untouched. You know, the surf and the waves on the top of the ocean can become go very high, become rough. Uh, but at the bottom of the ocean, there's perfect stillness. We have that kind of stillness within us. And that stillness is the source of our resilience, our strength, and our spiritual grounding. Everything on the surface of life is always changing. Yet the still presence within us never changes. As we each take time to step back from the activities of life and retreat into that stillness, we renew and regenerate ourselves, body, mind, and spirit. And we continually strengthen our capacity for resilience. So as we move toward closing now, I'd like to leave you with an invitation to reflect on some questions that might be important to you today. When you came in today, you each received a, a rolled up paper. And this is for you to take home with you and um, reflect to see if there's anything here that would be of value to you, you know, as you look within and find your own answers. I like to, I always like to leave people with questions rather than answers. Uh, because I think it's important for each of us to go inside and find those answers that we each have uh, the capacity to access through the deeper wisdom, the infinite deeper wisdom that we all have available to us. And perhaps you may think of other questions that may be relevant to you that you want to add to your list of questions for reflection, but the questions that I have left for you are those specifically maybe more related to Mother in the spirit of Mother in your life. So I, I would like to leave you um, with one question today as a closing for my talk. And that question is, what opportunities do you have in your life to allow divine love to express more fully for you? So I invite you to reflect on that question and to wonder, is it possible that your love could make a big difference for someone, like the pink dress made for the little girl in the story. Thank you very much.